You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping Survivor Series 2017. Yeah. So overall, good show. I agree. Um, it was kind of hard for them to disappoint with the card that they put together. Oh, yeah. It was a really strong card. Yeah. One of the strongest in quite some time for, I guess, a big pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Well, usually what they do is they kind of rely on one match, match to, to yeah. carry the whole thing. Whereas this one was kind of solid throughout. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually got three matches on the pre-show. We were only told about the Cruiserweight Championship match. Yeah. But uh, we opened the pre-show with Elias versus Matt Hardy. Mm -hmm. um, pretty standard match here. Nothing oh, yeah. too crazy. Um, Th this is no different than anything you'd see on Raw. No. Which um, obviously makes sense because it's on the pre-show, which right. isn't on the WWE Network technically. So That is true. Um, um Elias but, won with the drift away mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Uh I, I think they're just trying to build up Elias and yeah. since Jeff is hurt, they don't really care about what they do with Matt. It's such a shame. It's true. But Whatever. we all knew it would come to this. Yeah, unfortunately. That brought us to the cruiserweight championship with Enzo defending against Kalisto. Yes, the highlight of this <laughs> match actually took place before the match. Yeah. Um, so Kalisto normally comes or enters the ring by running into the ring, jumping on a trampoline and flipping over the top rope into the ring. Mm -hmm. But this time, instead, what he did was landed on the top rope on his in his like abdomen, and then like flipped over and had a very rough landing. It was pretty funny. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, besides that, it was a pretty underwhelming match. Yeah. Sloppy. That's... as is kind of what we've come accustomed to with Enzo. And Kalisto, pretty yeah. much. So Zin ring work is not where the money is at. Yeah. So anyway, um, Enzo obviously wins with uh, Jordanzo. Yep. And uh, that's it. That was that. And then that brought us to the last match on the pre-show with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Brizongo. Mm -hmm. So uh, before the match, Owens and Zayn come out and they start trashing like everybody. Yeah. And then they start talking about the the fashion police mm -hmm. and then they come out and right. they start telling them that they have a lot of um fashion violations yeah and they have tickets mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh but yeah another you know okay yeah. match it was was pretty much just to put owens and zane on the card oh yeah it was on the free show mm -hmm. but at least let them have an appearance exactly because so. they've been a pretty big spotlight on smackdown you can't just be like uh well, yeah, they're technically part of the main story, and yet, you know, they're they not weren't on the main on, card. Yeah. yeah. So. But, yeah. Anyway, for I, I don't understand these two-hour pre-shows, but. Um, yeah, it's a good question. There's really no need for no. that. Um, anyway. Like you would have, you could have just done one match in an hour, and then did the rest of. Promos. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, like no, you right. said, get into the main card. Yeah. So the first match we had the Shield versus the New Day. Yes. Um, this was, I would say, a good way to kick off the show. Yeah. This was well, a match that didn't underperform, which yeah. we didn't have doubts. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a couple times where the match could have ended, but it was the pinfall was broken up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's kind of to be <clears throat> expected in big matches like this. Um, right. But yeah, this like you said, it was a good a good like way to start it because it was a pivotal match in the mm -hmm. or in the story so since obviously you couldn't finish on the team raw uh, the team raw versus team smackdown match this was a good way to start it mm -hmm. um but yeah throughout the match there was a whole lot of back and forth you know yeah, uh, there was true. points in time where um roman was by himself facing the whole new day mm -hmm. there was times where biggie was facing the three shield people which i mean we kind of got a look in that Roman with the shield isn't going to give him a complete baby face pop from the audience. Oh, yeah. He was getting booed an awful was. lot. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I mean, it's not a thing that's going to happen overnight, but. Yeah. As long as they, when they decide to go their separate ways, they still remain allies. I think that would be best for. Yeah. Well, because it's an easy way to make stories that include more people. Mm -hmm. So that's really the big thing. Um, yeah. but yeah, there's a lot of, really, there's a lot of cool spots here. Um, I know Biggie speared Dean through, uh, the middle rope at one point, which yeah. is a little 
kind of a scary yeah, usually spot. He goes for the suicide dive, which is scary enough. Yeah. But yeah, when he speared him through. Um, Did not look pretty. We saw a few uh, rounds of the Unicorn Stampede. (laughs) I think the Shield did it once as well. Um, Crowd was not behind that when they went for it a second time. No. Well, because it kind of loses its... (laughs) No, absolutely. Um, And then we saw a good spot where... What did Xavier have Big E on his shoulders? And then Kofi went onto Big E's shoulders, jumped off, did a frog splash. Then Big E did a frog splash. Yeah, that was was, was different. Yeah. Yeah. that was a good spot. Um, and then I think the at the end of the match, um, I think Roman hit a spear mm-hmm. on, I think it was Woods, and then they threw out uh, Kingston and uh, Big E, and then they hit the, uh, the triple, power, the triple bomb. power bomb on Woods to end the match. Well, that was they did it off the top rope, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right, because, because of, I guess, the... The thing that the new day did to kind of step up their game yeah they they had to compete so but yeah, it was it was pretty cool um but, you know it's this really shows how deep their roster is when this match can start the show oh yeah you're taking you know three of your biggest competitors on raw and just able to put them in one match mm-hmm. so yeah good way to start the show it's true then the second match was the women's survivor series elimination match yes team raw being Asuka, Alicia Fox, Sasha Banks, Nia Jax, and Bailey versus SmackDowns, Becky Lynch, Naomi, Carmella, Tamina, and Natalia. Yes. Um, this was a decent match. Uh, it was a couple sloppy spots. Mm. Um, but we actually got to see a decent amount from Tamina. She yeah. looked good in the match. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not very often that she's able to look strong. No, but they built her up to be the Tough dominant one. force on on the team smackdown with charlotte's absence since she won the title yeah exactly um but yeah this this was a like like you said it wasn't a very like ex- uh, greatly executed match but yeah. it was it was entertaining nonetheless mm-hmm. and um, before the match stephanie kind of had a uh, pep uh, rally in the back so to speak similar to what uh shane did on smackdown last week yeah i was trying to rally the raw women mm-hmm. And uh, Alicia Fox as captain was very excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're not gonna bother going into the order. Order of elimination. Yeah, no. it's a little, it's a little too much to do. Yeah. Um, but basically, actually, the um, the probably the most noteworthy is that Becky Lynch, captain of Team SmackDown, was the first one eliminated. Yeah, in the very match. quickly into the match. Um, she got rolled up, I think, by Bailey. Bailey. Mm-hmm. Um, but beyond that, it was I think at one point two on three Team SmackDown. With I think it was Oscar and um, was it Bailey the last one? No, Sasha. I think. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it was Oscar and Sasha, mm-hmm. and then it got down to to one, uh, two on two, and then two on one with Oscar facing off against Tamina and, and Natalia. Natalia, yeah, and Oscar was able to take uh, take on the two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so she got them both with the Oscar lock. And yeah, not a shocker here. Mm-hmm. Oscar's been the main focal point of the women's division Mm -hmm. right now so it makes sense for them to go over with her winning exactly but um all right so uh, up next we had baron corbin versus the miz Mm -hmm. the Uh, heel versus heel yeah uh this was a much better match than kind of expecting yeah yeah this was um a real good showcase of corbin yeah because he went in against the miz with the miz Taraj around the ring and they were able to insert themselves a few times, at least, mm. into the match. Yeah. Um, Curtis Axel was supporting a red uh, neck brace tonight. To, to support his team. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. And Maurice was actually at ringside. Yes. So there was a point where there was an interaction between her and Corbin. Yeah, he was yelling at mm-hmm. her, which is what he likes to do. Yep. Um, well, like this like i said this uh match didn't really disappoint because it kind of built up like a real tension which is nice to Mm -hmm. see um especially considering they didn't have any actual interaction on tv no well well, that's good though when you kind of have separate things and Mm -hmm. then it just happens at at, you know the pay-per-view rather than them beating a dead horse Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden exactly it's it's better it's better use of uh story Mm -hmm. absolutely so um but yeah uh so so corbin ends up hitting an end of days on the interfering bo dallas mm-hmm. and then he i guess the miz goes for a, a skull crushing finale but he uh re- 
uh, reverses it to uh, another end of days on The Miz. And that's how the match ended, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. Yeah, good showing for Corbin. We don't get those too often at pay-per-views. Yeah, it's true. Well, considering that. Big, big pay-per-views, I yeah. should say. <laughs> wow. SummerSlam I, I, after I, getting beat by Cena. Yeah, and also, Hell in a Cell wasn't necessarily him being... Like no, he, dominant. No, he just, got a lucky win. Yeah. Um, and then after the match, Renee Young uh, came out to uh, ask yeah. him about the match, and mm-hmm. which is the only time she came out for this, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he just really said that I didn't do this for any. I didn't do this for anybody. I did it for myself. Mm-hmm. And then when he stand over the Miz and said, "Hey, Miz, when my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut, or your mouth went close, right? Yeah. yeah. So." good stuff yeah so he at least he's you know not floundering like we kind of thought he would yeah. at first yeah. especially after what cena did to him right but we both expected him to win and he yeah. did it's true he was the one that needed the win here oh absolutely yeah so then we uh got the tag team champions of raw versus the tag team champions of smackdown with mm-hmm. the usos facing sheamus and cesaro yes uh, that's a good match mm-hmm. um yeah, it's, it's kind of been the theme with tag team wrestling at the pay-per-views it, it, lately. It's been very good. Yeah. Was, um, this is also a very fresh match because we haven't right. seen it. Since last Survivor Series, which is good that they had some sort of story kind of to build on. Yeah, and the, the f- kind of funny thing is that last year, n- no one would have expected this to be the scenario in the tag team right. division. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they definitely, I mean, the Usos were on par with the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, f- I guess a-, a fun fact from the match: there was a point in time where uh, the Usos were doing a few super kicks on Cesaro, <laughs> and then I think it was Graves who uh, said, was it by- "I think that was Byron." It was one of the two yeah. said that we were having a super kick party. Cease and desist. Yeah, and the what do you say? The Young Bucks. Yeah, the actually... Young Bucks posted on Twitter. Cease yeah. and desist. Yeah, was... it was pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, but, but yeah, yeah, a lot of near yeah. falls in this match as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of breaking up and mm-hmm. stuff like that. A couple of big spots where um, the Sheamus and, and Cesaro do their like t- tandem offense with. Uh, yeah, didn't they hit the white noise? The, yeah, the like it's the combination yeah, of white, white noise. noise. Where you, yep. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, the ending of the match was uh, Jay went to the top rope and uh, hit a frog splash on uh, Sheamus. And yeah, that was that was it. Yep. Yeah, because before the ending. Uh, I guess it was the same way it happened last year, w- what they were going for with the bro kick, right? Into oh, the, on the uh, outside? Yeah, no, inside the ring when Sheamus was going for the bro kick and then he knocked him out because well, the announcers were like, this is exactly what happened last oh, year. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they turned it around and got the win. Mm-hmm. That brought us to the women's match yes. with uh, SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte against Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss. Yes. Uh, this was a good match. Mm-hmm. They... Yeah, I, I nothing bad to really say about the match. They they actually worked really well with each other. Yeah, Alexa was very dominant for probably the majority of the match. Mm-hmm. Um, she was able to kind of just physically handle Charlotte. Yeah, for some yeah, reason, it didn't look like Charlotte was really down playing or playing down to Alexa. Yeah, like you can see in some of her matches with on SmackDown with some of the under uh, experienced or mm-hmm. inexperienced talent. Yeah. But yeah, she uh she did a lot of like uh I guess like submission holds mm-hmm. and just kind of kept Charlotte down for the majority of the match. Um and, yeah, and there was no Lux Lux that didn't try to cheat really at all. No, right? no, no. None, none of that. It was a pretty clean yeah. clean match. Um and then Charlotte was able to overpower her at one point. She hit the natural selection. Mm-hmm. Bliss but, kicked out. Yep. So there's a lot of the uh, once Charlotte got that first you know run of offense there was mm-hmm. some back and forth Alexa went for her DDT and she wasn't able to connect she hit a DDT but not yeah. her DDT No no I thought you know she did it Charlotte put her foot on the rope remember oh, cuz she okay, went to hook yeah, one yeah. leg and yeah, then went to yeah, the other leg yeah. and then she put her foot it, on the rope And yeah. it's funny because it didn't look like her normal DDT it just looked like a regular one yeah. but I guess it technically it really doesn't matter pretty much Um and then after that Charlotte was able to lock in the uh, figure yeah, eight. Yeah, she hit her with final. a big boot and then yeah. the figure eight. And uh, then Bliss tapped ev- out. Eventually, yeah, Bliss tapped out. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I thought this was definitely one of the better matches of the night. Mm-hmm. 
And, and you know, it, it's nice that, you know, kind of Alexa Bliss is starting to look like more of a legitimate wrestling Champion. threat oh, yeah. instead of just a, a good character. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That brought us to the anticipated Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles mm-hmm. match. The Universal Champion of Raw versus the World Champion on SmackDown. Yeah. This match didn't quite go as I expected it to. No. Um, no in either. terms of the way it started. Yeah, no. Brock started out just destroying AJ. He was throwing him around the ring, then throwing him outside the ring. Oh, yeah. It was... I think he hit, what, three Germans in the match? Something yeah. like that? It was it was brutal. It was AJ was like a ragdoll yeah. for like pretty much the entire match. Mm-hmm. Um. And it was funny because there was a point in time where he was sitting in the corner and Braun was, no, Braun, Brock was charging at him and we kind of figured that, that AJ, AJ was, was going to move. Yeah. But he hits him right in the head <laughs> with the with the knee. So I'm like, oh, wow, maybe he's not going to get any offense in yeah. at that point. Yeah, at one point it was, it was looking like a squash match, but yeah. thankfully it did not go that way. Yeah, at one point AJ is able to start countering some stuff and then he starts getting a lot of quick offense in. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually hit, no, did he hit the phenomenal forearm in the yeah. ring? Um, yeah, yeah. He oh, no, hit. no, no, no. He he went for one in the ring, and he missed. He yeah, hit one Brock, outside of the ring. No, Brock caught him. And no, that, he was, went, that was the last one. No, no, no. He caught him, and then he went for an F5, and then AJ countered oh, it, okay. I he, he, yeah, yeah. yeah, he snaked out of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then he hits one on the outside. Yeah, because he was waiting for Brock to move, because AJ kept taunting he was going to do it outside uh, over the top rope, and yeah. then Braun, I mean, Brock finally got into position. He hit him with that. And then he threw Brock knee first into the steps. Oh yeah, which yeah, yeah, that did not look pleasant. Yeah, he was uh, he was limping as he was leaving after the mm-hmm. match. Um, but uh, as we alluded to, eventually, uh, even though it looked like AJ was really rolling, he uh, goes for a phenomenal forearm. Brock catches him, hits mm-hmm. him with an F five, and that's yeah, that's the match. Yeah, he did hit the the four fifty in the ring though. AJ. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So. But yeah, it was um, it was a good showing. Yeah, it, it was. He uh, got the calf oh, crusher on as well. Oh yes, Brock yes. Was able to move out of the way. Yeah. Um. um yeah, it was a very. It was a competitive match. Yeah, it you was. Know, it, it was probably it, one of Brock's best matches in a while. Yeah, it didn't make AJ look weak. At no, all. because you know he just got. He's got beat by who is perceived to be the the, the man. best. Yep. So. You know, it's hard. It's hard to take the two best competitors in the company and put them against each other and make one look good right. and one not look good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this was definitely the better option than Jinder. Jinder, yes. You which, don't say. Which there was rumors that he was going to interfere. interfere in the match, but thankfully we did not get any of that. Yeah, right before the match, they actually showed like a promo of Jinder talking down to AJ, which is kind of strange yeah. if he wasn't going to get involved, but. Like like uh, he said, we're better off with him not getting involved. Yeah. Let that stick on SmackDown and not get anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I would assume we'll be getting a rematch within the next coming weeks. If yeah, which is Clash fine as long as Jinder loses and we're good. Hey. That's all that matters. Yep. Whatever. Yeah. Um. So uh, that leads us to the main event. Yeah. Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. Mm-hmm. We got Triple H, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, and Kurt Angle for Raw. And then we got Randy Orton, Shane McMahon, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, and John Cena for uh, Team SmackDown. Yep. Um, this was a match. It was interesting. It was it was something. Um, there was, it's, it's funny because we're coming off of the uh, ending of the match, which was kind of Oh, odd. yeah, yeah. It but... Was- the beginning was actually really good. Yeah, because at first there was a lot of uh, animosity toward the members of Team Raw where they kept tagging each other in, right? Yeah, there was a little a bit of confusion in terms of who was in charge, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of points in time where, or there's at least a few, where there's a lot of individual spots where like you kind of, like, oh, this is this is cool. Like Shane, uh, not Shane. Um, Triple H had a couple, a couple with Rude and Shinsuke. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was uh, some with Orton. Yeah, I think Orton was in there too. Yeah, and um, and then at one point Cena was really rolling because mm-hmm. he f- he like spent like the majority of the beginning of the match on, on the, outside. the outside. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't realize he was, he was there. there. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
But yeah, it was it was a lot of good individual performances. Um, Angle, Angle, uh, Triple H, and uh, Shane didn't really do a whole lot. CBS Sports gave this a C rating. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think it has a lot to do with the ending. Yeah. Though. Um, but like I said, it was entertaining, and then at the end of it, it kind of just got confusing. Yeah. I think that's a good. Yeah, put well, it. Nakamura was the first eliminated, yes. and then Rude went yes. shortly after mm-hmm. him. So it was five on three. Yep, and then who went next? Was it Joe? Joe was the next Cena one. Cena eliminated Joe. And then, and then Balor. Finn. So we had three on three, right? Yeah. And then... Cena gets eliminated no, by Braun. No, Orton eliminated Balor, because he hit him with the RKO after oh, Balor Oh, okay, went yeah, that's the, right. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. And then uh, Braun eliminates Cena. Cena, right. Yeah, um, so Cena really did not do much in the match. No. Beside eliminate Joe, that mm-hmm. that was about it. He was That's, kind of just there for the Well, it was okay. Power. We're taking we're putting the title on AJ and we don't want Jinder in the match. Mm-hmm. So that's really it's like, oh, it's the only option. Yeah. Which is fine. I don't know. I was excited to have Cena in the match. Mm. Made so, sense. Yeah, and it didn't hurt. You know what I mean? No, it's absolutely. O- it's an odd situation because it's Hasn't been on TV since September, and yeah, now yeah, he's he, in this one big match, and then he's gone for however long. Mm-hmm. Unless he shows up on SmackDown next week, mm-hmm. and you know, then we're singing a different tune. Yeah, because you know, it kind of it'll lead to something mm-hmm. or whatever. Even if it's even if nothing was established tonight, it'll still, you know, it it you know it's building to him doing something else. Right. Um. So that left. Orton and Shane. Shane, and is that when Owens and Zayn came out? Nope. That was was that when? Oh, that was when Finn hit the drop kick on Shane to the outside, right? But yeah, Shane was down, and then Orton was uh, going for a t- tag, and that's, oh, when, that's when that's when that's Shane, Shane got ripped yep. off of the apron by oh. Owens and Zayn. Mm-hmm. They beat him up, and then he teleports from behind the. Uh, <laughs> The announce table to the timekeeper's area, mm-hmm. and he magically gets a chair. Yep. Starts beating the two of them up with the chair, and then they run away. Yep. And then at this point, Orton was in the ring and trip the Triple H. I think he got no. hit with a power slam. Was it a power? Slam? Or no, well, angle, well, angle eliminated angle, with an angle, angle slam. slam. That's what it was. Yeah. Yes. Because I, I think Braun softened him up, mm-hmm. and then Angle tagged him in, right. and then he hit him with the Angle yeah. slam. So Shane realizes that it's three on one, and mm-hmm. he's walking back to his side. And one of the referees from the back, come, right? It was, it was I guess referee. there's probably two referees yeah. out there. Came, comes up, and grabs a chair out of Shane's arms. So like, you can't have that. Shane's just standing there, and the other refs counting. Got to the count of eight, right? Then goes in the ring, and then he was facing off with what Braun, and uh, then Triple H yeah. tagged himself in, mm-hmm. and Braun kind of just stared at him. Got out of the ring. Triple H and Shane were. Did they get into it at all? Nope. Or no. Nope. Okay, and angle then that's tag- when Angle tagged in. What they did was they circled the ring once. Oh, that's right. When Triple H got back to his corner, Angle mm-hmm. tagged him in. Yep. Um, and then Angle started to grapple with Shane, mm-hmm. hits him with or puts him in the ankle lock, has it in for a while. Yeah, this was a weird spot because it looked like Kurt was just kind of holding on to Shane. He mm-hmm. wasn't doing anything. Shane didn't really look like he was writhing in pain for yeah. uh, for a minute, and then. He was just not tapping out, so Triple H got frustrated, gets in the ring, hits Angle, goes for a pedigree that looked absolutely oh, awful. Yeah. It was completely he botched. dropped Kurt right on his head, Yeah, and then he rolled Shane on top of him. and Shane pins Shane, Angle. Yep, Angle's eliminated. Mm-hmm. So Triple H is on the side of the ring, or in, inside the ring, and he's kind of looking at Braun, and Braun's kind of just staring at him. <laughs> and then... Triple H goes up to Shane and he pretends like they were on the same se- uh, side. Yeah. And then Triple H pedigrees Shane and pins him. Mm-hmm. Um, during that exchange, after Triple H, uh, or right before Triple H pedigreed uh, Shane, when Braun's staring at him, you can, like, you can kind of see the wheels turning in his head. <laughs> I He's can't like, what, comprehend what, what's, what's going, going on here. This wasn't a part of the script. Yeah. <laughs> So after he get after he pins him, Triple H walks up to him. He comes into the ring, and he's just staring at yeah. him. Triple H raises his arm, just staring at him. Mm-hmm. Go, turns around, raises his arm to the other side of the crowd, just staring at him. Mm-hmm. And then what? Triple H went into the corner, right? Well, no, it was it was just 
like I think he got to the third raising hands, mm-hmm. and then he just grabs him by the throat. Oh, and then that's when he pushes ran him, into him into the, the corner. corner. Yeah, and he says, "If you cross me again, if you ever try to cross me again, I will end you." Yeah, and or something then, like that. Yeah. Then he hits him with a running power slam, and then a second one, and that was it. That man. was the end. He left the ring, and uh, that was how the show ended. Yeah. Um, like I said, that match started off very well. I think once we saw that. Uh, Orton and Shane were the last two on SmackDown. They were not winning. It wasn't going to end well. Unless the only way I I possibly see them winning was Kane coming in and attacking Braun and Jason Jordan coming in and helping eliminate Triple H. Well, I was was also thinking just flat out Triple H siding with, actually siding with Shane. Oh, yeah. But Braun would have needed to be eliminated Mm -hmm. already. Yeah. So this was honestly, it was just a ploy to get, well, it was two things. It was... To make Braun look strong, mm-hmm. and to set up an angle between Kurt Angle and uh, Triple H, that was the only yeah. thing that was accomplished. Yeah, in that match. and they could have done it other ways mm-hmm. too. Also, you prolonged the Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon. Yeah. Start. Oh yeah, because we didn't mention the beginning of the match that Strowman was laying on the outside for like five minutes, ten minutes, yeah. because uh, what do you get? Quadruple power bomb through the table, yes. right? Oh uh, yeah, it was funny because I noted while we were watching it that. John Cena can pick up the big show by himself and AA him, but he needs three other people to help him pick up <laughs> Braun. Um, Braun Strowman. Yep. Math just doesn't add up. Sometimes it does not. Yeah, this was a bit of a head scratcher here. Yeah. I unfortunately the ending really It yeah, it it's, al- they always seem to do that, don't they? Yeah. Well last year it was Lesnar and um, Goldberg. Goldberg. That was that was a head scratcher yeah. for sure. Summer slam of last year when Orton faced Lesnar. And his brain was leaking on the ground. Yeah. So. This Summer Slam had a good ending though. Or yeah, it was Brock when Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the four four way for yes, the Yes, that Universal was a very title. good ending. Yeah. So but it seems like the consistency. But I don't know. Yeah, it, it's hard to it's hard to argue with just what we got. You know I mean, I still think it was a good pay per view. Oh yeah, overall, yeah, so. definitely. But it just when it happens at the end, and it, mm. that's what you take away from yep. the show. Yep. It's just like, uh yeah. Because it's funny because they think they were doing good by having Braun look strong, right? Which is fine, but yeah. but at the same time, it's like I f- you feel like. N- the whole story was kind of for nothing. Right. Because at the end of the day, you know, Braun may have won the match. Well, no, Triple H won the yeah, match. Yeah, but I'm just saying he might have <laughs> been the win, the one of the winners in the match, yeah. but he didn't gain anything from winning. Mm-hmm. So. And it's, they're not going to do anything with him and Triple H. Yeah, because so. it, it's not... It, that, that part of the fight wasn't his. No, right. So He was just a bystander. Mm-hmm. So, but, But, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. So that was our Survivor Series review. Yes. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.